Hi guys, welcome back to English with Max. In this video, we're going to look at some board game vocabulary. As you can see, I'm currently playing a game of Monopoly with Frank and George. Before we get started though, I just want to quickly remind you that you can also follow me on social media, and if you'd like to sign up for my free advanced English email lessons, you'll find the link in the description. Okay, let's get started. First, we're going to look at some vocabulary that's commonly used in board games generally, so not just in Monopoly. Here we have the board. This is a board. That's why these types of games are called board games. Next we have dice. This is an irregular noun. The singular is die, one die, and the plural is dice, two dice. We don't say two dies. Lots of native speakers actually say dice for both the plural and singular, so they say one dice, two dice. When I was younger, I was taught that that was incorrect, so I say die and dice, but languages evolve, so lots of dictionaries now say that both ways are acceptable. Now, if you do this, that's rolling the dice, to roll the dice. If there's just one, you could say to roll a die. Okay, now it is Frank's turn. Um, if it's the time for you to roll the dice or to do something in a game, then we say it's that person's turn. In this game here, it is now Frank's turn. There you go, Frank. You want me to roll the dice for you? He's so lazy. There we go, you got a four. One, two, three, four. Would you like to buy that? No? Okay, but look, Frank, you got a double. If the numbers are the same, that's called a double. You can get a double or roll a double. If you roll a double in Monopoly, you get another turn. You got a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think you own that one already, don't you? Yeah. Okay, now it is George's turn. We're going in a clockwise direction. Clockwise means the same way that the hands on a clock move. Uh, in other words, the person to your left will go after you. The opposite to clockwise is anti-clockwise. But in most games, the direction is clockwise. George, it is now your turn. Do you want me to roll for you as well? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and you have landed on a street that nobody owns. Would you like to buy it? No? You're going to save your money? Okay. It is now my turn. 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I have passed go. So I get money from the bank. Now, in Monopoly, this square here is called Go, and that's where everybody starts. If you pass Go, you also get money from the bank. Now, you might have noticed that it doesn't actually say Go here. Uh, that's because this is a very old German version of Monopoly that a friend gave to me years ago. 
Um, yeah, but it doesn't really matter for this video. Even if I did have an English version, I honestly wouldn't go through all the street names. If you want to learn the street names in Monopoly in English, well, um, you can Google that. Another thing that can happen to you in Monopoly is landing here and going to jail. So if you land on this square here, you go directly to jail. Now, these things here that you use to move around the board are called tokens. One token, two tokens. That's the proper name for them, but lots of people also just say piece. One piece, two pieces. Um, you probably know the names of most of them. Most of them are quite easy. This is a dog. Uh, this is a ship. This is a hat. This is an iron. Be careful of the pronunciation. It's not iron, remember? It's iron in British English and iron in American English. Uh, this is a boot. This is the car. And here are a couple of words that you might not know. This is a... This is a thimble. Thimble. This is something that is used in sewing. And here we have a wheelbarrow. That's a wheelbarrow. And you probably know these as well, but just in case, this is a house and this is a hotel. And now we're going to look at some chess vocabulary. We'll start with this. This is the board or more specifically, the chessboard. There are 64 squares on a chessboard. 32 white ones and 32 black ones. So the two um, sides in chess are black and white. They don't have to literally be black and white, but the lighter color is just called white and the darker color is called black. Okay, now let's look at the pieces. This here is a pawn. A pawn. Each side has eight pawns. Next we have a rook. This is a rook. Some people call them castles, but the more proper name is Rook. Next we have a knight. Knight. And this is a bishop. Bishop. Here we have the queen. Queen. And this is the king. King. Now, when the king is under attack, so for example, I mean, this would never happen in a game of chess like this, but if the king is here and a bishop is attacking it, that's called check. The king is now in check. Now, if the king is in a position where it can't get out of being attacked, that's called checkmate checkmate. And that's the end of the game. Now in chess, you probably know this, white always moves first. You could say white starts, white goes first, or white moves first. Um, and then after white moves, it is black's turn. In chess, you can also say that it's the other person's move. So I could say, now it's black's move. 
I've just started a game of Scrabble with Frank and George. I went first and I put turn and then it was Frank's turn and he put fart. Well done Frank. Now I'm not going to go into all of the rules of Scrabble but in case you don't know the game you basically need to create words with tiles that you get. Each tile has a letter on it. Um, sometimes you will get a tile that has nothing on it and that's called a blank tile. Let's now look at the board a little more closely. Here we have double letter score. That means that if, for example, there is a T there, which is worth one point, you would get two points because double one is two. Two times one is two. Gosh, I'm good at math. Um, here we have triple letter score. So that means that you multiply the number by three. For example, if there's an F here, which is worth four, you would get 12. But obviously you can't just have a single tile here that would be attached to a word. We also have double word score and that means that you add up the numbers of all the tiles in the word and then double it or multiply it by two. And there is also triple word score which everybody tries to get. Uh, can you see that? Triple word score. And that's the same as double word score but you multiply the total by three. And now we're going to look at backgammon. Backgammon. Be careful of the pronunciation. We don't say backgammon. The k flows into the g. So we say backgammon. Backgammon. Now, like in chess, the dark color is called black and the light color is called white. These are just called dice. They're regular dice. This is called a doubling cube. A doubling cube. This part here is called the bar. And these triangular bits here are called points. Points. Now these things here have several different names. Some people call them checkers, for example. You can also call them stones. Um, I just call them pieces, to be honest. Pieces. And finally we have dominoes. These things here are called dominoes. There are lots of different games you can play with these though. Um, one piece, oh, can I get it out? <laughs> one piece is called a domino. So one domino, two dominoes. You can also call these tiles. So this is a tile or a domino tile. The word tile is quite general, it's used in lots of different contexts, but if you know that the person is talking about dominoes, um, then yeah, a tile is one of these. Thanks very much for watching everybody, I hope you found this helpful. <laughs> if not, then hopefully it was a bit of fun. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, and if you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos. See you next time. Help! <laughs> Big red vet there. Monty is making noise. Uh, house. Oops. <laughs>